Hello, welcome to the Arcadian Podcast. This is episode three. It is Monday, January 28th, 2019. Uh, and joining me today, I have Adam Wolf, Ben Bachman, and Dave Mead. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Good. What's up, man? Howdy, partner. Nothing. Just happy to be back with you guys again. Excited mm-hmm. for the show. Yeah. Let's get the trifecta. Ooh. The trifecta. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, today uh, I got a pretty good lineup. So main topic is going to be based around RNG as a mechanic. And uh, really the main question is going to be, is it good or bad for competitive gaming? And, you know, how much RNG is too much? Uh, Trending news afterwards. So we're going to touch on the artifact player base being down 97.5% since launch. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey gets heat for forcing the player into a heterosexual heterosexual relationship to have a biological child. Woo! Uh, this kind of links back to what we talked about in a previous podcast, so Metro Exodus will be releasing solely on Epic's platform and will not be selling Huge. on Steam. That's big. Uh, and then my favorite story of the year already in 2019, Farming Simulator <laughs> <Simulator's laughs> is getting its own esports league with $280,000 in cash prizes. Golly. Uh, but let's uh, let's roll up into RNG, and uh, I'll just frame this conversation uh, to start with, like you know, with the question. I, I see a trend in competitive gaming and esports as a whole that a lot of the games that are getting popularity are a little bit more reliant on RNG, or they have more factors of RNG than games did in the past. Uh, and I guess just seeing this trend, um, I know me personally, I kind of don't like it. Uh, you know, talk about if it's good for the esports industry as a whole, if it's going to help it grow, or if it's going to hold it back in the long run. Well, I have something hmm. to say about that, actually. The uh, so, like, what RNG does, right? Um, competitive gaming, obviously, you want there to be some some level of competition, skill between whoever's competing, and RNG kind of takes the the um, that edge out of it. You know, it kind of lowers the skill cap. It allows the less skilled player to come out on top, right? Potentially. I would have to agree, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, so this is where it, it differs for me a little bit. I, I've, I've, you know, I grew up on playing turn-based RPGs, and, I mean, there's RNG all, all through those games. There's always been RNG in games, um, but... Uh, You're right. It's, it's different now that most of our games are multiplayer. <clears throat> That's the biggest point, right? Because mm-hmm. they're trying to bring like old tropes, mm-hmm. like like crit chance and things like that, yep. from old RPGs into a brand new. Y- we didn't have multiplayer video games back in the day, right? Mm-hmm. Not on the scale that we do now. Mm-mm. Dave, what are your thoughts? Um, I think it's good to a certain extent, but it's easy to go overboard with it, and I think we've seen. A lot of examples where it has probably gone a little too far. Hmm. What, what do you think? Like, what's a, a decent example? Like Hearthstone or something like that? Or just kind of gets of going too far? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, what's too yeah, far, so, right? Yeah, I mean, Hearthstone, for example, like when Yogg-Saron first came out, you could <laughs> oh, yeah. literally. I forgot about Yogg-Saron. You literally could be losing the entire game. Like, you <sighs> were getting shit on. No. The games, like, you have no chance of winning. In any fucking phase of reality, yep. unless you play yeah. Yogg Saron and it casts random spells and you can just win the game and come back. Yeah, Adam. So y'all, impossible. Y'all oh, I, I've seen it. Oh, you know what it is? Okay. Disguised okay. Toast. My, my oh yeah, you, I forgot you watched first on stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Used to throw on the music and just let it roll. Yeah, uh-huh. Yogg was kind of uh, yeah. a so very. That's probably yeah. that's probably like the most extreme example of. RNG being bad. Did they, how quickly did it take for them to transition out of it, or did or did they just uh, did they just Yaga's, ride that out? Yaga's they eventually they year, eventually right? nerfed it, but it, it I mean it was several months with just crazy shit going on. Like they eventually changed it so like if one of the spells it cast killed him killed Yog, then it wouldn't cast any more spells. Yeah, it was but still before, nuts. It was still yeah, nuts. But, yeah, but before that, it could kill itself and it would still cast all the spells. Yeah, so you're right. So yeah, I th- I think that. I mean that that shines some light on it right there is you know it's got to be balanced and I think that you know with a lot of these video games it's hard for them to find the balance it's just like anything else that's implemented 
you know uh there has to be a trial period where like people are reacting to it and they have to play it out and people are playing different play styles different uh you know in these card games they're playing against different decks and everything i want so. to kind of rehash that yogg saran thing that you know as a person that didn't play her stone when i would watch that it was super entertaining Right. It was so yeah. much fun to watch. Yeah, the turner, you I mean the turnarounds? About, well, yeah, I mean he would just like play some. It was hilarious, and like all this crazy stuffs happening. So like, it, it's like a spectator. Yep. I thought it was really cool, but you know maybe it just doesn't. Maybe well, maybe it's fine for like you and me playing like not at the highest I, I think, level. I think I think that's the exact conversation that we got that we have to have for like the next hour, and that's exactly what you just said. Like for for the person that, that, that for the spectator, it's the best. Because, like, anything can happen, anybody can win, any spell can be pulled. Like, what's more exciting than that? Like, really nothing. Like, it's, it's, right. awesome. it's like, endless possibilities on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, in the long term, from a competitive <laughs> standpoint, like, no game can really be taken seriously with that element mm-hmm. as yep. a possibility. Because you can have the best player in the world, uh, you know, who plays perfectly for, you know, 100 games in a row, and then he gets to the final tournament, and he, somebody plays Yogg, and he loses, and, you know, it's over. It's just not. It's 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 unfair. I think, and people do not yeah, like. Yeah. Well, and like Yog could bring you back from literally an unwinnable position. Yes, absolutely. Which yep. Feels bad. Like yeah, that, you, that like shouldn't you be. Have, that shouldn't be. You have a fifteen there. turn. Like you, games. You had fifteen turns in the game, and you played incredibly, and you're in the lead, and basically there's no way they can win unless they draw this card and play it, <laughs> and then they can just swing the whole board back and you lose. Like it feels bad. Right. Now, like Hearthstone has other elements too that I think like. That when you look at the the frame of Hearthstone as a whole, that like if you know that a card is in somebody's deck and you know that it has a random effect, you can kind of play around the possibilities. Right. Like th- think about um, Animal Companion and Hunter, right? Like everybody knows that Animal Companion is in is in like every Hunter deck, uh, right. but it, and it's gonna summon either Misha, Huffer, it's or a uh, th- it's a three different or Leoc. And, like, but people know that that's coming on turn three, and, like, they know that it's going to be one of those cards. Now, like, one is obviously going to be better for one player and worse for another, but it doesn't feel as bad because at least the player can play around the number of possibilities that the card can have. Mm-hmm. Like, that doesn't feel as bad to me as something like Yogg, right? right? Could you lose if you played Yogg yourself? Could it, like, take you out, or it was just auto win every time? Oh, no, it could. It could kill you. Okay. But, like, All right. So there was chances. some R. All right. I yeah, think there's that, the, yeah, it could kill you, but like if you were in, you could be in a position where you literally could not win, and that card could literally just win you the game okay. based on what the effects. Like it could clear the entire opponent's board and like heal you back to full, and give you a giant board of minions, and then you could just then that would just win you the game. Right. That just sounds oh. ridiculous. Hey, I just Dave, I just looked it up. Dave, <laughs> correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like there's a lot more spells in Hearthstone that like, you know, are bad for the enemy player and like better for you you know just like with the way that like they're written like whenever they come up it just seems like they're going to be more beneficial to you most of the time than they are for your opponent yep I agree just like that. the way that they are, are used oh, right oh, i, I agree what you're saying so do you think in a competitive sense if you're going to have any rng that we're saying 50 50 good for you good for them eh. every time i don't think it necessarily has to be that but, but like and then it's like rng is different per, per game too like in a card game obviously there's going to be rng just because of draws and stuff on top of it yeah but I, it, uh, there's I inherent know. rng in card games right. that you just can't get rid of because you're drawing cards from a deck that randomly but that's the expectation but, right i mean right. that's right yeah. so like i mean rng in that kind of game you probably expect it more and and like honestly a card game kind of gets boring without rng you yes. have to have some yep. kind there of be some you don't you don't want, want you don't want cookie cutter games playing out every time you have to have a little bit of you know okay. flavor well, and disparity yeah, yeah that, i mean that's how a card game a card game is rng <laughs> that's the basis that's right. the base of it you know so like so in a card game i'm okay with more rng but like other games like league that are more mechanical i maybe don't care for rng as much I, right. I saw i saw a lot of articles when i was kind of doing a little research on this before you know we did this episode uh comparing hearthstone and other card games to poker uh, you know, a lot of people were making cases that, like, you know, obviously there's some luck in poker because, you know, any card can come up. And, you you know, you can plan for it based on percentages and odds, but you never really know what card's going to come up, right? Mm-hmm. You never really know, like, what cards the other player has. But I would kind of argue that, like, I don't really see the two as similar. Mm-mm. 
I see a lot of the RNG that happens in Hearthstone, and it just feels a lot worse as a mechanic than. Well, the game's so. it's it's so much more vaster. There's so many more different. Um, yeah. It doesn't seem as abilities, you know. Me. Right, like there's so many more random elements to Hearthstone than, than a game like poker. Yeah. Like, poker is way more skill based than. If Hearthstone. you go down to like the most general level, then yes. But if, if and if you leave there, then it's like no, there's no there's no comparisons really. There's there's so much more depth to these these new card games that are coming out. Yeah, it's kind of silly. It's like saying like it's like comparing flipping like a quarter to playing yeah. a card game like Hearthstone or something like. Yeah, there's a chance. There. No, I mean, I I, I definitely it. agree. I definitely agree. Yeah. But the um, uh, like you were saying with the the competitiveness in it, do you just. It's, do you keep all this RNG in the game just because it's so exciting? I think to with the card games, I think it's I think it's fair game. Um, there has to be a, there has to be a bunch of balancing going on though, and like you can't have a card that's just you can't you can't really have a card that's like a catch all that like is gonna save you like that. I, I don't think. Like you guys are talking about with that Yogg card. When I looked it up, it's like, oh my gosh. If you're a mage and you're just casting spell, damage spells the whole time and then you draw that, like that's that's insane. You're going to kill the enemy. You know what I mean? There's there's nothing that's going to be able to save them. Right. Yeah, like card games need RNG, but you definitely, like the developers and the community have to like provide feedback and they have to like be able to, you know, right. go back and be like, okay, maybe this is a little too much. We need to fix this. Or maybe, right. you know. Kind of like how they did with Yogg, they eventually, you know, toned it down. But like, yeah, yeah or like, like, like I kind of said before, like having that frame around it. Like even if a card, like a Hearth card that comes out and it's like, you know, play this card and like it'll summon a random two cost minion. Like, there's a lot of possibilities <laughs> two cost minion yeah. that can come up. But right. but still, like a really skilled player, like a pro player, is they gonna can work around know, that easily. Yeah, I mean, other than like something really insane popping out, like a Doomsayer or something, which is it doesn't happen often like they can usually like kind of know what's coming and be able to to overcome that um so it feels yeah yeah so the, dogs, the, 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 the variables can't be so so um expansive that like it, it's impossible for the other person to come back like it, it has to be limited variables so the other person can react and um play against it you know so you don't drain like all of the skill that's involved in the game out of right. it right right and what? knowledge you know people Take a lot of knowledge. Take a lot of time to build up the knowledge of these cards and shit. <laughs> yeah, it seems like yeah. that's a hard thing to, to translate. Like, the RNG is really exciting in, in most cases, um, as far as like competitive play and things like that. At least to me, it seems like that's the most probably appealing thing. But you have to have like a really intimate knowledge yeah. of that game to to even yep. pick up any skill that you're watching, right? right. So kind of. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe the same thing with any other competitive sport. It kind of makes it difficult, especially with the game, games as complex as they are now, to invite new uh, new viewership, things like that, yeah. that, based on just knowing the skill and, you know, uh, what every single card does and things like that. But Yeah, and just getting... to expand on viewership, how you said that, like RNG is obviously really good for the viewers, and like with esports becoming yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger, the more like RNG like wow moments that they can create, mm -hmm. yep. the more people are gonna watch them. So like you have to kind of factor that in, right? Yep, yep, exactly. I mean that's what I that's what I was thinking of when you when Wolf was saying earlier about how he enjoyed watching that when a Yogg was getting pulled out. It's like I would like it, but I also feel I I got sympathy for the dude who's getting that card drawn, especially oh, if yeah, right. their ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it makes it exciting for sure. Go ahead, so, go ahead, Matt. I was gonna say, let's just talk about another really popular esports game, which is League of Legends, which we've talked about before. Because I mean, it's it's a great game, but you know, that's a game that's it's, it's completely different from Hearthstone. I mean, to compare the two games is <clears throat> kind of asinine, I think. But like, other than crit chance, which I think is a very obvious form of RNG, which I really don't like being in League. Like, I think I wish they kind of take it out because I don't really see the point of it being there. Um. But I don't really think that League has any other real form of RNG other than that that I could really think of. Other than uh, the people playing the, the game who are RNG <laughs> just, right. by, <laughs> just by being <laughs> people and picking a yeah. character. From a competitive no, just, standpoint. I no, yeah, I got you're, you're right. Just, you're right. Well, I'm I would say, well, ass. I think there's one other thing that's RNG <laughs> is what side of the map you're on is a big deal in competitive. 
That's true. That is true. Yeah, but I think you can draft. I mean, you can draft like strategic. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. But I'm saying like that. That's that RNG changes drafts. Like if you're on top side or you're on bottom side, it changes how you your strategy depending right. on what side you're on. Yep. So like that's, that's a true. little bit of RNG, but I don't think that I don't think it's like. Yeah. It's not like fucking Yogs are on. You just win the game. Yep. Right. I like how they, I mean, obviously they balance that out in the highest competitive play where they alternate sides and best of series. Yep, and right. then, you know, even if they're one, you know, a heads up, one match wins it um, throughout the season, they'll alternate sides, which is good. But I feel like two things you guys are forgetting about, and they're really recent additions, like big time RNG, the, one of the newer um, champions, the heroes, uh, Zoe, with her what is it her passive? Passive. What just what is picks it? Yeah. up picks up random um, summoner spells, random items just off the ground to use. And what? Use items. I mean, yeah, clap the, and, uh, what, and, and then it, and then it takes yeah, over her summoner spells or she no, can just use them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now. Wow. I I think I yeah you're right you you're absolutely right and I th- actually think. Whenever she came out, like weren't like wasn't everybody pissed that she had that passive because it was so RNG. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the community was like really mad about it, which they should have been. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a it, it's she's kind of exciting to watch. Uh, I have like a I feel like, but for most people that have a real intimate knowledge of the game, <clears throat> I feel like everybody knows that she is not good for the you know for other reasons as well, having her insane range. But the RNG on top of it, mm-hmm. as far as does she have an? Did she pick up an extra flash? Did she yeah. Ooh, pick up a, a redemption to drop a heal on the bottom lane to turn I, a flight? I feel like one of the ways that League could, one of the only ways that League could really get out of popularity is if they keep releasing stuff like that. I feel like that's the exact thing. It's that such a don't slippery slope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like League's like a, it's a very technical game, like a technically skilled game, and like games like that, you don't need RNG as much because. The player, like, the player's, like, ability difference mm-hmm. and, like, gap between yep. the players kind of is the RNG and, like, the wow yep. factor in that exactly. game. Yep, right? you're, exactly. And, and the different, the, and, the, and the champion pulls so deep that, like, you get a different game every time. Yep. You yeah, right. play that, that mind game in lane with the matchups. Yep. That's, or jungle, that's huge. the jungle, where are you going to be at in the jungle? Is he going to be stealing my shit? Do I, you know, all yeah. of, do I got to anticipate where he's going to be so I can put a ward down? I mean, that's like, that's all, it, it, it never, that's skill too. But <laughs> some of it does have a random component to it as well. That's true. I mean, it happens. I, I don't I watch enough competitive it. play, but you guys would have a better idea if they're just like it's taking mm-hmm. chances with some of the wards they're throwing out. Like, is it more of a is it a riskier ward drop somewhere in order yeah. to get some sight down? But uh, hey, you might be looking at nothing the whole time, you know? Like what I notice uh, in the competitive play, like you were saying with jungling, uh, I think you touched on it briefly that when, especially when they invade and take the the other like the enemy team's jungle. Yep. Sometimes, sometimes they know. All right, we're we're vertical jungling. I'm going to take part of their jungle. They're right. going to take part of mine. Yep. Other times, they have no idea. They walk over to their their opposite side of the map, and nothing's there. So, I mean, there really yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know if that's RNG. Cool. Though. That's more like a chess match yes. in the game, right? Yes. Yeah, that's more strategy than RNG. Right. Yeah. But but I mean the, then like I, I mean this is a different this is a different conversation, but uh, you know <laughs> well, doesn't this we're, take, talking, we're saying that, that it takes a place. Our brains RNG, are basically right? oh you know, okay if you're, I understand yeah, yeah. You know. they, they yeah, don't right. need RNG because yeah you're right of the I mean you have people actually controlling control there's more control of the game compared to to a game like Hearthstone where mm-hmm. you know you're you're at the whim of what cards you're drawing. Mm-hmm. There's so many more decisions oh, to be made yeah. in a game like League of Legends. But the, the, the crit chance, I love the crit chance, dude. I, I, oh, you do like it? Okay. Oh, dude, I've crit chance has been there since you know F, uh, Final Fantasy fucking um, four. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's been there the whole time, and like it's it sucks. I mean, when that's you're, like not, fighting the hard ass boss. Was, uh, you're feeling Final Fantasy, of... Final Fantasy four wasn't on the forefront of esports though. Yeah. No, but I, well, I, that's why I'm saying I'm biased right? to it. I I like crit. I like when you know that random you know ma- massive damage you could do. When I was when I used to play old school RPGs and I'd be fighting a bo- uh, you know a hard boss for the first time, and he just comes in and it's like the yeah, third yeah. strike and he just pulverizes my team. I'm like, oh, I gotta go back and get fucking stronger, man. Like, 
Yeah, right? I mean, I guess I guess it's just like if you're landing against a Trindomir top lane at level one, yeah. and he has some crit chance, and yep. like you go to trade with him, and he gets a big crit on you, like, and you lose lane because of that, that doesn't really feel too good. Yeah, but I I don't think it's as big as uh, as factor. You could like you're saying the variables. You know that he's gonna be critting, so just stay the hell away from him. Get some money. Get some fucking armor, man. I guess that's a valid point. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, you can do uh, that. It's like it's just, it's not like a dra- like it's RNG, but I don't think it's like drastic, drastic. Like yeah, sure. Every once in a while, like you're gonna kill somebody because you got a crit, but it's not like you're gonna kill people because of crit every single time. Right. Yeah, it's not Yogg. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's talk about battle royales as a genre. Uh, Because this is actually what kind of, like, spiked my um, wanting to have this conversation, because I think, like, the genre is getting so popular with Fortnite, and, I mean, I'll throw PUBG in, too, but I don't don't know how popular PUBG is at this point. But uh, I feel like they are just, like, RNG incarnate games. Like, Mm -hmm. everything about them is RNG. Uh, like oh, yeah. from from where you land and how many players are near you, like to loot spawn, like what you're gonna yeah. get in the chess. Yeah. A uh, crate drop locations in PUBG, they have like that red circle that drops missiles randomly, which is so stupid. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't like it. it was so game. silly. Where the circle's gonna end, like in comparison to where you start. Uh, you know. Yeah, but the, the, it, here we here we are again. Now, from my perspective, I understand totally where you're coming from, and it is true. It's an RNG game. But from my perspective, like also as you play that game and you get more experience, like you're gonna adapt and you're gonna be more skilled at learning, like when the circles coming in, like where what 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 areas are you gonna be in, like where the terrain's gonna it's gonna be an advantage for you to be where you're at on the, sure. uh, the map yeah, and everything. Well, I I actually completely agree, and I think that this is like the conversation i think this ties into hearthstone too is that like obviously there's a big element of skill in battle royales in hearthstone because the same players are good at it and win all the time so yep. obviously it's not just complete mm-hmm. luck yep 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 but like there still are a ton of elements to luck in it and i guess like really the overall question is just is is that good for the esports scene as a whole i i personally again i don't think that it is but you know, for a while that they were talking it's good. It with PUBG. i think it's good short term right yeah, I agree with that. Short term, for sure, but long term, maybe mm. not. Yeah, like, can, can a game ever exceed the point? Like, can it ever get so popular being solely based or, or so heavily based on RNG? Because eventually, like, a game has to have clear parameters and clear roles for it to become super popular. Yeah, I, th- I think... I mean, like, look at... Look at like the NFL and that call that just happened in the Saints game, at the, or the no call that just happened in the Saints game. Like that was very unfair, and it went outside the rules of the parameters of the game that are well established, right? Mm-hmm. And like what happened? Everybody like flipped, which they uh-huh. should. So like to have all these elements of randomness in esports, like I think is is holding back its popularity. Uh, so I I, th- I think I think Dave uh, he had it correct there. I think short term and these games. Um, they have other things going for them. Uh, the more you play it, the you get rewarded quotation marks, or you just spend the fucking money on the game and get some boxes or whatever. But um, short term, it is rewarding. It's fast paced. It's a different genre, you know. So I think I think it has its place. It's not. It's certainly not uh, anything I'm interested in playing long term. Um, and I think that's where you're coming from uh, as well, Matt. Is um, yeah, it, it has it as appeals to different gamers. I think you know what I mean. <clears throat> I think it's great for the casual player. Um, mm-hmm. maybe that's oh, a absolutely. Player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and like RNG gives the casual player a chance to like beat the skilled player. Yep, yep, like, yep. If yep. you get a lucky something, you're like, oh look, I just beat so and so the streamer because right. I. Got a shotgun. Got this item, or I got <laughs> yeah. lucky crit, or I did that. You know what I mean? Like sometimes that can happen. That's a really yeah. good point. Yeah. I know that uh, the community was for a while. They're calling for uh, like standard uh, loot spawn on the map in competitive play for PUBG. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how much else they wanted to standardize, and I don't believe they ended up ever doing it. No, they didn't. No, no. It seemed like players want that too to kind of take take the game more seriously right mm-hmm. kind of just too much rng just kind of made it feel um maybe your favorite team was kind of get, getting shafted not getting yeah. the guns that well that i don't i, I don't see or any like, like there's no like big pots for any of these tournaments and these tournaments just like they're never taken seriously in comparison to, like a moba tournament or anything like that it's not even it's 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 just it's all about the streamers you know the, these people are just um watching the tournaments and stuff uh, that have happened 
I think it's only been Fortnite really the, that has had, had any success. And, like, it's just because, like, there's popular streamers that are in, in the tournaments. Like, that's all it's about. It's not actually about a team yeah. you're watching, you know. <clears throat> I think you're right, Ben. It does seem to be, like, an industry solely built around, like, personalities. Yep. It's so, it is so true. Yeah, man. personalities and content for sure. Mm. But and, I, I, I like yeah. it. I, I, we, we had our little fun time on PUBG, but like it, it was so, it was short lived, man. <laughs> I think it, every the, time I log in, the, I mean, the same thing happens. You know, well, yeah. I mean, I'm not very good at it, number one, so I die all the time, but it's like, you know, you finally get like a good drop. You, you get like yeah. a sniper or something, one out of like 30 games. You're finally like stacked and going to the end game. You're running around for 30 minutes, and you just get shot like from a mile away by somebody that you don't see or something. And it's just it's, like, why the hell do I want to play this game anymore? It's, like, it's, it's it garbage. is funny, dude, because some t- the one time we got on there, you had that crossbow, and we're like, <laughs> was <pretty> <laughs> that was, yeah, I was I was sneaking around, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, Dave, I'm gonna kind of defer to you here, um, and just to talk about uh, the competitive scene of World of Warcraft and the RNG that's involved with that. Yeah, I'll try to make it quick because I feel like Take your time, man. this subject has been talked about a shitload. Yeah, it's a good topic. So <laughs> by I'm, a lot of people. I'm down. To it, would, it would be disrespectful not to at least touch on it a yeah. little bit, right? Yeah, yep, I agree. <laughs> so I think everybody can agree that Warcraft from vanilla till now, RNG has increased significantly. Mm-hmm. In regards to at least like itemization especially itemization and so like the big thing is now is like like before in like vanilla you know you would do a raid and you'd kill a boss and they would drop this item and like that was that item it was that good mm-hmm. all the time it was like you know it was a constant like you knew what it was going to do right now you kill something and then like it has a warforge or titanforge chance so the, uh, the the item can upgrade to you know have more item level or a socket or indestructible or movement speed and when was that dave when was that that. when did that take place uh that started in legion i think shit that sounds right i don't think it was in wad i think it started in legion i didn't play wad a ton because it was a terrible expansion but so like now like there's no like you do a raid and like you get the item and it's like well this isn't the best version of this oh, item it's like, it's it it. you know what i mean so like it's hard to ever like finish your character or feel like you completed it like in vanilla you cleared tier one and that was the only tier and like once you got the set piece like you had the best gear yep. like there's yep. no questions about it and you could like chill out mm-hmm. now it's like do you ever really finish your character and then going back to the competitive side of warcraft so like the world first race for like the first kill in a new raid on mythic the first like clear is a big deal and like the rng of drops can definitely affect it it's probably not as bad in um battle for azeroth because there's no legendaries and stuff but in legion like if you were lucky enough to get a legendary like that completely changed the whole world first and like and then even not for like the competitive scene just for casual people like our raiding guild would bring the guy that got the legendary and got lucky and the guy that didn't have the legendary got benched because even though that player may be better the legendary just made the other guy so much better than you and more desirable Hmm. so i think i mean i think they learned from that and they you know it kind of got fixed and they didn't let that happen as much in battle for azeroth but like that was like a big deal like you like literally like good players would get screwed or like you could or like if you got a bad legendary like your character was like dead at the beginning, like you couldn't even use it, you might as well just re-roll and try to try again. That's yeah, pretty, that's, think, that, that's that sucks in my. It opinion. sounds, that, that, it sounds that's really like bad. yeah, that's like hardcore RNG. Like it you is. Know, like how bad would it feel to level up your character and then get like the worst legendary for your class and like basically you know like I'm not gonna get another legendary for like a month, so this character is pretty much. It sounds useless. like I'd be better off just going down to the casino and like ah, playing play a slot what? machine or something, <laughs> like putting my 401k into a slot machine. Yeah, right. So <laughs> that I mean, they definitely tried to level that out as the expansion went on and like they didn't let that happen in bfa so much but at the beginning of legion like that was a really big fucking deal and like it could like sure if you got the best legendary it felt really good but the odds of you getting the best legendary when there's 12 of them or whatever isn't that good so if you get like a shitty one that doesn't increase your output but increases like utility like you're like oh well fuck 
Like, what's the point of this game now? <laughs> yeah, like, what am I? Yeah, what, what did I just play for ten thousand hours? Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, and then that, like that stinks. to continue yeah. talking about like Titan Forging and like RNG, yeah. like you can like so like rating has different tiers. There's like LFR, which is like a pickup group for like you could literally be autistic and a monkey and clear <laughs> LFR so you can experience raid content and then like don't you know, be talking about up. me like that <laughs> <laughs> so, so, really like, the game. you can do you can do this crappy like watered down version of a raid and you can get a titan forge that's better than mythic loot which like i mean yeah sure if you're like it's cool for like the casual player that gets it but like it feels bad like if you invest the time to raid mythic and like people can get get lucky and get better loot than you yeah with minimal effort that really sucks yeah like that feels bad and then well, it's, it seems like seems everything like... that you're saying dude it seems like it's just it, the the randomness of it is just catering to people who are like not uh, it, it, this is my perspective well, it, it seems yeah, to it's, be it's you know, catering to, it's catering to the casuals that's all yes. that's what it is yeah, yeah, and like yes. you can't really blame them for that because like they need like right. there's yes. more casual players than hardcore players obviously yeah. yes but it just like it's a little bit too much, I think. That's... I mean, to me, and maybe I'm wrong here, Dave. You can tell me if I am, but like, it seems to me that the longevity of WoW is completely tied to putting the time in to get better gear, right? Like the grind to get the best gear. Oh, yeah. so, like, That's why would is, they? Man. Why would they circumvent that and and put ways for players to get better gear by not putting the time in? It ruins the whole core concept of, the, of their game. Oh, I agree. And, like, yeah. it was cool, like, whenever you know, like, okay, this guy killed this, and he's in town with all this cool gear on. You're yep. like, wow, this guy, you he know this ass. guy killed this. You know he's really good. <laughs> and now it's like anybody can have the same shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, Watered down, just, in there's my not opinion. As much, yeah, there's not as much, mm-hmm. like, disparity between, like, the really, really good upper echelon of players and then, like, your casual run-of-the-mill guy. There's not as much of that anymore. Yep. It was like cool to go. Like you go into town, you're like, holy hell, this guy's got blah blah blah. Like, no one has that. He must have played so much and tried so hard. And now, like, that's not really in the game anymore. It's everything's more like watered down. And I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but like, I mean, we we, it's our biased opinions. Where you know, our our history is more of a little bit hardcore when it comes, especially to MMOs and stuff. So, I mean, for a casual player, it's great. You know. Sure. Punk, punks. <laughs> well, well, ben, I, well, Ben, I think I think you're right, and this actually ties into the the next point that I wanted to to talk about. And uh, I think we've we've gone over some of the the really popular games that are currently trending uh, in the esports scene now. But you know, whenever we were kind of growing up and esports was like just originating, it seemed like a lot of the games didn't have a lot of RNG. Uh, and you know, the two that that I have listed here are you know Halo and Counter Strike. You know, both shooters. Um, but you know, I played a ton of Halo, very, very skill based, like yeah, extremely. Yeah. No loadouts, no random weapons. Like some no, people are doing just crazy shit on you know, that. You have the same same loadouts. You have uh, your weapons responding in, in in a in the same location on every map, on um, the same timer. You know, you're playing around those power weapons. You're moving around the map as a team. Like you're taking control points. Like uh, to me, like that's an esport. Like that's a competitive game. Yeah. I, 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 agree. I agree. Um, I agree 100. percent So I I was a SOCOM player, and I mean that's your, it's just your loadout, bro. <laughs> right. And you pick up weapons off of uh off of your dead enemies, but um, I and that that was a, that's another one like the SOCOM players. They were some they were some seriously skilled dudes in that yeah. game, man. That was really serious. <laughs> and I. Uh, speaking about Halo, I remember we used to, me and um, Wolf, we would go over to Marino's and our friends Phil's, and we would play um, just, uh, you know, um, split screen. And we'd be doing some pretty crazy shit. You know? <laughs> and, but mostly it would be like Phil <laughs> or like oh, Tim yeah. Divine. <laughs> Filthy fast finger. Yeah. Fast finger. Mm-hmm. But uh, those guys, those were the. Really, and if you could really tell someone who had been playing the game for a long time, they would smash you with with, and and they know where everything's at. They got they got their seconds, minutes ahead. <laughs> well, that's kind of exciting too, from like a competitive point of view in a spectator sport. When when you can really, like you said, you can really feel and see that when the skill 
when the skill comes to the forefront, right? There's no RNG. This is just, did you put in more time or did he put in more time? Is he yep. better? Yep. So I guess, I guess what we're saying, like that really works, and you see it in Counter Strike, mm-hmm. perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, are there any other uh, like older games that you guys can think of that, that come to mind? That I, I don't know if you put a lot of time into them, but Halo was the uh, best. I'll, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, you, we, <clears throat> we pretty much, I think the RNG is mainly came out of like role playing games and like pseudo role playing games, strategy games. Uh, I don't, I don't think that it came uh, anywhere. Like it was strictly skill based from from shooters and everything. And uh, I mean. That, that's what I remember, at least. Everything else was, like, stra- you know, it, it came out of, like, the strategy genre a lot, I think, too. <clears throat> so, I guess, to tie this question in with what we've talked about previously, why is the industry moving towards RNG now? Like, what's driving the change? It's more inclusive, right? Yep, yep, yep. When you lower the skill cap with more RNG, you make the... It's kind of all about like five hours a week yep. to be able to take on, uh, you know. In the RNG, I mean, it, <laughs> it has like that. It has like that poppy feel, you know, that are kind of like. I mean, this I'm just making this up in my head, but it has like that poppy <laughs> random feel that like you get with the loot boxes. You know what I mean? So maybe they're conditioning us here. <laughs> conditioning <laughs> through through the get through the gameplay, they're conditioning us to buy the the uh, loot boxes and stuff. <laughs> Dave, what are your thoughts? <laughs> oh, and like to go back to, I don't think it necessarily lowers a, lowers like the skill cap or whatever. I think it just the gap between bad players and good players is just narrower. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if you're like yeah, it's easier right. it's easier to be good at the game. I, I like obviously like the game is still a lot of games are still like really mechanical and you still have to be really good at them. But there's less of a difference between you know like a mid tier player and a really good player. Yeah, I think you're like right. The, the gap, the gap. I mean, there's still a gap, but it's gotten a lot smaller now because of RNG and things like that can help to you know narrow that gap and make everybody more competitive. I think that another big influence is like the popularity of streamers and like watching them react yep. to crazy scenarios and stuff. Yep. Do you guys see that as being like a? Yep. Oh yep. yeah. Because I feel uh, like I mean, that's like a huge. Drive. That, was in the, that was in the back of my head the whole time. Uh, that's when, I, when we were kind of bringing that up a little bit with the with the battlegrounds. Mm-hmm. Um, such a big factor. You know, like watching Doctor Disrespect like flip out because he because <laughs> the PUBG code or something is terrible. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it just makes great content. Yep. Certainly, I think I think you're got you got something there as well, man. <laughs> huh. So I, I think we've kind of hit on this, but. As far as luck versus skill goes, and this might actually change like with different genres, but is there a perfect balance between luck and skill uh, in competitive gaming, or should it just be like 100% skill based? Like, what what is the best way to do it? I think it depends on the game, because like a game like like yep. a card game, I think there can be a little bit more RNG, because like that's like a card game is RNG in, inherently, right? Yeah because of drawing cards from a yep. deck and randomly drawing them so like that has inherent rng so like it's okay if there's a little bit more rng in that but a mechanically skilled game like league of legends i would like to see that be basically all skill like i don't i don't need rng when like the, the like the mechanical aspect of that game is so intense and like crazy right and then like just the champion pulls and like how things change based on drafts and everything there's enough like entertainment just in that itself for me that I rather just see really good players play each other and not, no, I don't want to see a team win just because a guy got a lucky crit or he picked up a cool weapon. Like I want to see the best players just duke it out on yep. equal yep. terms and just the, the more skilled team wins. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, now I th- I think a lot of the I, I I'm, I'm, it's hard for me to draw the line for RNG because like, we're talking about. Never mind. You can see everybody's items in League of Legends, so <laughs> that's all. I, you can see them as soon as you see them. So never mind. That's but uh, think about like, um, you know, me and Wolf have a little bit of history with like Total War. So what would you consider this RNG? What is the character doing in the fog that you can't see? Mm. Well, I I feel like that we're almost getting a little off topic with that because it, those are you know predominantly single player games i mean there right. is a, a pvp yes. scene okay, in them, but, but this isn't like the upper echelon of 
of the, the competitive scene and esports right. and things All like right, you that. Guys are, you guys are on the competitive. Okay. Uh-huh. But I, <laughs> so <laughs> oh, that's so, just my mind. That's just my mind wander, from, wandering. From what just Dave was saying, I want to get some, you know, um, <laughs> it, I, I get some validation on what's what's going on it, in your guys' head with that. It, it, it sounds a like a game. <laughs> Ben's been getting his ass kicked on Total War. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that too much RNG. Yeah, you can't say well, like, you Sorry, were... Adam. Go ahead. I interrupted you. The, uh, it's like like Dave was saying it. It, it sounds like uh, games like Fortnite and PUBG, with their random aspects, with the RNG that's that's already inherent in the game, just the way that it's set up with um, you know dropping in the zone closing and things like that. They can't really make a great competitive game compared to something like a Counter Strike, where it's more reminiscent of, of Halo, where it's strictly skill based. Right, right, right. And, well, they, they they haven't in quite some time. I think they could. I think they've just, um, as we're finding out, I think that the industry is just veering towards whatever's popular and whatever. And I mean, come on, the battleground shit. That's just that's getting crushed. It's been getting crushed for like the past two years. You know, it's like mm-hmm. that's all they want to make is because they know it's popular. They know at least for a period of time they're gonna make their money back, and then with the microtransactions they're gonna even make more money you know <clears throat> so yeah. i agree with like all points yeah. yeah i think rng it really comes down to the game like a game like league of legends there's really no need for it mm-hmm. there's enough parity inherently in the game with how you draft champs and how yep. you counter draft people and just the skill level like the mechanical skill level of the players in general i think there's enough parity from all that, that you don't really need RNG, but like a card game, you kind of need RNG. Otherwise, it's just the same cookie cutter thing over and over. Yeah. And yeah. You need to wants, like, you know, yeah. you need to add a little spice to the game, you know? Yeah, I do. I think that's a great point. I, I think it hits a nail on the head. It just, it, it's really, really, really dependent on what you're playing. Yes. So card games are really boring. <laughs> uh, Without love, RNG, snooze definitely. fest. No, I like <laughs> you're yeah. the you're the one watching a wolf, you loofy. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's toast, man. He's a funny guy. He's good at cardstone, right? <laughs> I mean, when we were at BlizzCon watching the uh, Hearthstone tournament, I had a ton of fun. I mean, that was live, but uh, I thought it was great. That that was fun. That yeah. was fun. Even as a person that doesn't know the game very well, uh, they, they make it really accessible and. That random element to it really, really draws you in, big time. Oh, you guys sure it wasn't just the booze and beers that were maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the cosplayers? I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so there's only one more point I want to make on RNG, but before I move to that point, because it's kind of separate from the competitive portion, uh, are there any other games that you guys wanted to touch on? Like I can think of like Overwatch or StarCraft. Stuff like that that we didn't really talk about. I didn't want to leave those out of the conversation if you wanted to touch on anything. They seem like those have very little yeah. RNG in them, right? I, I, Overwatch yeah. doesn't have like weapon spawns or anything like that. It, it set maps, oh, no. you know I, what the objective Dave, is. is. Is there anything is, you can is think there of? Fog, like, is there fog in, in, in uh, StarCraft when you're playing other people? There is fog, yeah. but, but that's, that's not strategy. RNG, right? Yeah, that's strategy. Yeah, it's like part of the game. Yeah, There's but... There's ways to combat that. It's actually like right through through mechanics in the game, you know, if you can like, yeah, you're right, you're correct, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I don't think that's RNG because like that, like you know, like you know the map and you know where everything is on the map, you just don't know where they are or what shit they have unless you go find it. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm like, saying if it's coming from a computer, then it could be considered RNG, but we're talking about competitive, so. Yes. Well, I'm thinking, yeah, what I'm like, as far as fog goes with like something like League, like if there wasn't fog in League the game like wouldn't even be strategic because you would just know everybody was at all times it like wouldn't even make any sense yeah just right, be right. getting ready for uh, team fights or something. Yeah, the, <laughs> the fog is like the key element of the strategy oh yeah, yeah, yeah. imagine yeah, how that's long that's games would last they'd be like days yeah. i can't think of anything in overwatch dave is there anything you can think of that's rng related i i mean but i haven't played it in a while but i don't really play that much either but i guess like other than like a random map or like what side if you're defending first or yeah something like that yeah, 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 yeah. like that yeah but you can and really then, cut down on those things you know i'm sure they can say you know you get to go this way he gets to go that way you divide it up evenly as far as uh, yeah. directions of the map and who gets to play what side of it they right. do it i mean i just like this too but you before they 
How do the they... overtime? How do the overtime elements work? Like, don't uh, like a tiebreaker? Don't they just pick somebody to attack and somebody to defend? That kind of seems like a seems like a coin flip. Uh, mm, yeah, like, I would say yeah, one. Yeah, one the game. They're yeah, attacking and defending are different things, and like one's probably easier than the other. Yeah, depending on the amount of time. I don't yeah. think there's much RNG involved with that. That that, that game's skill based. Seems to be more skill based, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, and like after before they implemented like not having multiple champions on the same team, I got tilted off the planet from playing against like eight Torchborns and just fucking. Oh, over I, remember. I remember. I remember. Oh, 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 it was it so. was unbelievable. I think I could. <laughs> Torchborns. <Yeah, it> <laughs> just, just turrets everywhere. You couldn't even get near the point. Uh, uh, just briefly, um, yeah. just because we were talking about World of Warcraft, Dave was mentioning like the world first thing, the competitive, really the only, uh, aside from like BlizzCon, the competitive nature of World of Warcraft that you know the everybody else gets to try to take part in. Um, I thought that uh, top top WoW guild transferring mm. transferring from Horde to Alliance for a competitive edge, which which the reason for it does slightly seem random i guess if you want to hear about this the they they were saying that apparently there's a, a, a pvp aspect to it with the um turning on pvp in the world whatever faction happens to be stronger gets less advantages than the faction that's weaker so by this this guild going from horde to alliance alliance being the weaker side on some servers they get an extra chance. It sounds 400 level item level yeah, gear. Is so, that is that the cap? Yeah. So just what? Well, it's not it's not the the, the it's it's not the cap. But like right now, 400 is like is like getting heroic gear. Okay. So it's like another it's like another chance at a good piece of loot before the mythic gear comes out to have your character more geared. But what happened was is so like they have like WoW changed to like war mode. So, like, you go into a city and you opt into PvP or you opt out of PvP. If you opt into PvP, you get more rewards for doing world quests and stuff because, you know what I mean, you have the nuisance mm -hmm. of, like, having to fight each other on top of doing the normal PvE stuff that you want to do. And, like, it was Horde-dominated. Like, the Horde, there'd always be... Horde would always outnumber Alliance, and the Alliance would just get crushed, and, like, all the Alliance were turning off war mode because it wasn't worth it to them because they were just getting shit on. <laughs> but then they changed. <laughs> but then they changed it, and they said, "Oh, like now we're gonna give them like a damage buff and like get thirty percent more rewards and stuff because they're the underrepresented faction." And then they like made a quest where like go kill horde players, and we'll give you a four hundred item level piece of loot. And like if you're on the horde side and you're raiding, you don't get that extra chance at loot before the tier. And if you're alliance, you do. So like, I get why they did it to make like. The alliance come back and do war mode more again and like have like the pvp aspect but like it, it it's gonna affect the world first race a little bit because if you're alliance you get an extra chance at a piece of loot that you know could titan forge and become <laughs> a max item level piece of loot and then like it, obviously it's really good when you start to do tier if you already have the best piece of gear that you can get in that slot not so much rng but it just feels really unfortunate that you would give that kind of competitive edge. Granted, everybody has that opportunity, whether they want to spend the money or the the WoW gold to to transfer factions, which is just an insanity in my opinion. To, yeah, right. to to charge people to do that to give them a competitive edge and something what's that, that what is, is what really is, important. What's the cost surrounding that? Thirty dollars. Wow. But you can do, apparently you can do it, and and they did with with the actual. Yeah, you can. Currency. Yeah, right. So like the big guilds, like they can sell. You know what I mean? They sell. Mythic yeah. runs and stuff and make millions and millions of gold and they can just use that to pay for the server transfer and stuff. It's just big news. A lot of people are really upset. Gotcha. About, no, that's that's uh, crazy this. to hear about. I had no uh, idea. Really, it's it almost sounds like a failed um, experiment with the with the war mode thing to to me to try to incentivize it in that way and then and then have it directly affect. Pretty much something that's unrelated, PvP and and raiding, right? right? Like one is now directly affecting the other with this, with the incentives you're getting. It just doesn't doesn't feel right in a game like World of Warcraft. Where you're trying to balance these two factions. I think it's stupid. Takes so, it. this is my last point. 
<clears throat> on uh, RNG, and this doesn't really tie into the competitive scene at all, but I, I was just kind of thinking about this when I was writing the outline, and I figured you know, wanted to just bring it up, but I feel like RNG has, like, an inherently bad effect on, on a game's community and gaming culture as a whole, um, just because, <clears throat> like, for the sole reason, which is really simple, that whenever you're positively affected by RNG, it feels really, really, really good, and when you're negatively affected by it, it feels really, really bad, um, and I actually think that, you know, like, every time... Every time something good happens, something bad happens to somebody else. So there's always going to be like a 50-50 effect. But I actually think that like the feeling of like a negative effect is stronger than the feeling mm-hmm. of a good effect. So I think like all the time, like the toxicity in the community is just like rising and rising because people are constantly having these really bad experiences and losing to these super unfair um, like events happening in games. And I, I just I just think that it's not good like for the culture as a whole. You just next leveled it right there. That's you know what some, I mean? Some psych- you, you could write like... <laughs> a dissertation on that or something <laughs> yeah well, i've already started so. yeah your, your doctorate and uh psychiatry i was just thinking about it when i was writing this i just feel like it's garbage it's just it's, it's just crap it is i mean you're right. I, I think mean, that, i think that's more it's it's more of a subjective because you you've had these experiences and uh especially in like hearthstone and shit and obviously you've had some negative ones I think it's pretty well documented. You know, I, I don't have the resources in front of me right now. I was not expecting you to go to go that deep, but um, <laughs> that, that, that a bad... Anything uh, can happen here, Adam. You know, any kind of negative like, stimulus um, like uh... that is, is <laughs> definitely... Uh, I think, I think it has to deal with what population you're dealing with, Wolf. There's a lot of factors into that. There is I, factors. I, I, I don't. I think I don't broad, broadly, broadly, you might broadly might be right, but I I don't know. If that's, I don't know, Dave. Do you have any? That, thoughts that's on coming that? from that? somebody who even knows something really something bad, something bad. I'm gonna look for the positive out of it. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna be like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna you're, do you're the best to get better at this game. Kind of person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I mean, know, Dave, for me, as somebody, as somebody who's I've seen rage, <laughs> rage out on her some eighty times. Like, how do you feel about it? I mean, for me, I personally like rather win or lose based on skill because then i know like that guy was just better than me or i was better than him but like if i lose because he like pulled something out of his ass and beat me then like that feels bad it's like he's not he wasn't he didn't really play better than me he just got lucky at the end and won yeah i agree i mean like if i just get outperformed and i lose because he's just more skilled then i don't i'm not as mad because he's just better than me and i need to get good but if good I'm sorry. I'm sorry to to interrupt you there. How do you feel? Do you think that maybe at times we kind of trick ourselves into thinking that it was a little more random than it was? Because mm. I, I would I, rather I I'd rather possibly. say this guy just got lucky yeah, than possibly. he's actually better than me. Right. 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 Yeah. No. 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 I agree. I agree. 100 percent with that. There's. It's definitely like easy to say that, but it just depends. Like, like in League of Legends, when people say they got lucky, like maybe not. But like in Hearthstone, whenever like. The only way you can win the game is if you play Animal Companion that gives you Huffer and you get Huffer. <sighs> like, you weren't better than me. You just got lucky. Yeah, that's true. But I agree with you. There, it is, it is, it, there are times where you're like, oh, like that guy just got lucky, which... I mean, it's, that's kind of subjective too, right? It's, it's complicated. Yeah. It's hard. Does, like, does RNG kind of introduce like, that safeguard for, for our feelings, you know? Like, that, that randomness <laughs> in there is, <laughs> is kind of there to protect us. Like... We can always just say it was luck. It doesn't nah. protect me. I don't know if it protects me. I think it's yeah. a great thing, but it just pisses me off. It just I'm makes actually the best. Everyone's just yeah. lucky all the time. Yeah, we're. I mean, I, I I find that myself saying I'm, we didn't talk about magic really at all. Um, the RNG factor for magic is just strictly mana based. Right. And that's like what I find myself saying is like, oh shit, this guy got mana. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah. that's that's true. Yeah, I mean, it is true. And, uh, like, he just had better draws. He, he was able to um, get the correct mana in order to draw what he wanted to do. But um, I, I, th- I, think, I think it's subjective. Um, I think I, I truly do think that is. Um, and it's, it's, like Dave was saying, he put the nail on the coffin, man. It it's matters the genre of the you know, game yeah, you're playing. I, yeah, I agree. I agree with that 100%. And like RNG, get it, I feel like get it, we get talk it out of this for the next ten years and not ever stop talking because it's like never ending. Yeah, get get it out of make start making some more shooters without it because it's I, I haven't I played shooters recently because I, of it. 
I think if like Fortnite and PUBG are wondering why they like can't make it on the esports scene, I think that they should look at like the exact core of their game and realize that like it's yeah. not meant for the competitive scene. Yeah, they're gonna. Have and to it do never will. Different. Yeah, yeah they're gonna have to do something different. Yeah, it's just not gonna work long term. People are gonna get sick of the randomness. Yep, I agree. I mean, it's definitely got its like little niche thing for like like you were talking yeah. about with streamers, like the um that that element that you know like oh yeah look look what's happening you know <laughs> like look how crazy yes yeah, for it streaming is. and content creating it's perfect, but yep. for competitive not I, not so much. Yes. All right, let's There's a reason why like the most watched competitive game is League of Legends. Yep. Yep. I I agree. Still. I completely. And I think agree. a lot of it is because of there it's almost 100 percent skill based yep i completely agree with that and i like, wish, I wish like more strategy games. based like you know what i mean like when they're drafting like okay like sure you got this top laner but i'm gonna pick a counter top laner but now you can counter my bottom lane you know what i mean so there's yes there's push and pull on yep. both sides and then it turns yep. into a strategic like how are we gonna make this work as a whole team it's not like this guy just picked a random hero and we have no idea. Like, we don't get a counter it. It's just a blind pick. You know what I mean? Like, got to get your ducks in a line. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I just wish more games would embrace the skill the skill factor instead of the luck. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, that, I, that was we a great noticed, conversation. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get good, you know. <laughs> Shut uh, up. But I, let's talk about some of the trending, uh, trending events and trending news uh, in the industry. We had some really good ones today, so I've, I've been waiting to get down here. Uh, um, so first one. Uh, so the Artifact player base is down 97.5% since launch. And for anyone that doesn't know, Artifact is Valve's uh, newer card game that they came out with, and it was supposed to be, like, this Hearthstone killer that was going to, like, you know, just burst onto the scene. Like, everyone's going to forget about Magic and Hearthstone, and everyone's going to play Artifact. Um, but, yeah, it's the player base is down 97.5%, like, over the last two to three months. 61,000 players at launch, down to less than 1,500 players <sighs> right now. Might as well go play some FF11 on the Somi, man. You more people playing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, but uh, so th- I think I, I think there were two factors that led to this. I think that one, the game was very very expensive and inaccessible for players to get all the cards they needed to be like super competitive, and uh, it was very very complex as well. It's like three lanes instead of just one board. Uh, but I, do you got, do you guys have any thoughts on this? I don't think like any of us have really played it, but I don't know if you've seen it played. I haven't played it. Um, I read about it. Um, it sounds like they were over anticipating. Like uh, they thought their fans were gonna be super faithful and r- ride it out with them and play the game. And it looks like uh, too much too much money they were asking for for from the fans. Um, and it, uh, the the reward thing that we always talk about, um, obviously there must have not been enough um, reward for what what um, what they were paying for, you know. <clears throat> yeah, like I never played it, so I really can't comment to that. But just from like uh, going on Twitch and looking at what games were being played, like when it first came out, like ton of viewers, and then within like a week or two, like no viewers. So I think yeah, that it was like. Kinda... That kind, of speaks to the point of, yeah. that kind of speaks to the point of probably too expensive yep. and inaccessible to new players and too complicated. And, and, they, and they could they have went, went, they could have went to Hearthstone and Magic and um, yep. got a similar product for cheaper. You know, they can. Yep. Yeah. The, there's so many games out now. Like the the choice for players to play a game is, is so expansive. Like yep. they're not, they're not going to sit there and spend four hundred dollars on your game if they don't nope. like. It's not gonna happen. No. Nope. Didn't we predict oh, no. this? I feel like we talked about this. We kind of went over like the groundwork of the game. You were saying like the three lanes, and we just from hearing the description of the game, it sounded like that's way too involved. Yeah. How are you ever gonna keep people's interest? And in, when you look at games like, well, I, I'm not sure of like the actual origins of of Magic, how much lore is there, but I know it has a huge following and it has for years and years. In a game like Hearthstone, where you have essentially all the lore of like world of warcraft or warcraft in general which is yep vast and has a great great following yep. huge you can hold the attention for much longer the, uh, of these people and you know, unfortunately milk well, money I, out of them over time yeah with I, uh, the expansions and things like that to, and to I, onto the game. you know what i you know what i was just thinking about so this is a valve game um 
and those players are used to being able to switch over to a different game. So, um, so I think that may have to do with the population, the fan population they were dealing with are so used to switching over to a uh, different game. So even if they lost their attention for a period of time, they were, these particular fans were more likely to transition over to something else. You mean, cause they're so used to being on steam. Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you got to boot the game up through Steam, you know, so they, uh, they probably saw something and, you know, there's the connection there. Huh. And shit's just too expensive. I mean, I heard it was really, I mean, there, there's some numbers on it um, to uh, for a full set of cards, um, which I don't know what that means in this game. It could be different at 294 Two hundred ninety-four, yeah. Dollars. So worth. I, I, I'm, I'm Rupees? guessing that's a, a full set of cards. Is that's American? I, I don't know what it would mean to this game. Maybe we should leave this. That's American. <laughs> that's a lot of money. That's a shitload of money. And then they dropped it uh, mid-December to two hundred, and well, then they, the game cost twenty bucks too. I think, right? Yep. Yeah, December. that's the other thing. We didn't even talk about that. Yes, yeah, you're not, these quiet. card games, you're not gonna get people to buy them off the bat if they have such a microtransaction they're so, they're so based in the micro transaction <clears throat> yeah you're right uh all right let's jump to the next one i yeah. this this is probably my favorite ah. of the week uh this, i don't like normally whenever i bring up a, uh, a story like i'll have a point that i like kind of want to drive home or something with this one i have nothing to say i just want to bring it up <laughs> i want to see some i want to hear some comments i want to hear some feedback on so, this like what are uh, people thinking so, like, assassin's creed odyssey uh came out with a dlc and they got a lot of heat for it because they forced the player uh, in this dlc to get into a heterosexual relationship uh in order to have a biological child uh imagine that uh, so, you know, like players were pissed, people were pissed about this because in the original game, you could be male or female and you could have a relationship with anybody. Like it was just a free for all, right? Like there, there were no rules. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> so in the DLC, like whenever they like, I guess, you know, quote unquote, forced a player into this, uh, like people felt like it was changing, like what, like you, what the game was about in the beginning and like players didn't like it. So um, they actually updated the DLC and now they made the decision more like a utilitarian decision so that like it seems like it was more just for the child and there was like actually no roma- romance involved. And oh, really? People, people seem to <laughs> buy that now, yeah. I just wanted to get you guys' oh, I'm thoughts. Glad, glad they, I thought it was... Yeah. Like, you know, utilitarian. I'm glad they, <laughs> they cleared that up. Childbirth. You know. Utilitarian. They should have added something. It, it was to pass on the bloodline. It was to pass on the bloodline, yeah. Mm, mm. All yeah. right. We can't say that that doesn't happen, prob- you know, uh, it, just having kids for the sake of having kids. But I, I don't think that's something like the normal person is practicing, right? That's well, like something... we're doing, this is, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is it. Odyssey was in, uh, in Greek times. It just, I mean, it just. This one's Greek like, times. For for people to be bitching about it, it just seemed like kind of crazy to me because it's such a small, it's such a small thing to deal. Yeah, it's, why it's, does it it's fucking like, matter? Oh why does it matter? Why does like, it matter? Who cares? Well, all, all, it's, it's, then, it's, go ahead, go ahead. It, it's it's just funny to me. It's just like how are people so like they they go too far with this? With, with you know what I mean? It's like. The, these are subjective feelings that you are having and that you're commenting on and that you're giving somebody grief about that like are not that big of a deal at least to me from our perspective and we're we we kind of come from the same mindset all of us we're pretty traditional guys so like we may need we need feedback on this people like what the hell is going on yeah. <laughs> it just why is this such a big it's a video show. game like yeah. step yeah. back from reality and just play the video game like you yeah. don't need to drag reality into it just right. chill out yes exactly and you don't need to like you don't need to make it a personal thing why is it a personal thing can't you just this i heard this was a great amazing game can't you just go through the game i heard visually um it was beautiful i heard that the gameplay was good and the story was awesome it's like can't you just go through respect that and like not nitpick one small little thing and go oh shit they're they're not they're not yeah, catering to us like, you know what i mean it's it like, just seems like such a it just seems like such a minor feature to like to 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 complain about and bring up and like take a stand on like isn't there something else bigger that like people could be complaining about than this right right seriously i, I want to piggyback off ben's um idea there and i i, I want to kind of relate this to video games in general are like a another form of media and 
a medium to to express yourself, right? right. You know, game okay. developers, creators. This is essentially their image, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like you wouldn't necessarily call out another artist. I, I'll call him an artist to mm -hmm. uh, on on their interpretation of what you should be experiencing in their game. Like right. you wouldn't you wouldn't like look at the Mona Lisa and be like, uh uh, no, no, that's gotta be a guy thing. Cool. <laughs> Why is that a chick with boobs? Like not happening. You, you, like call call up. Good some, point, Wolf. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> right? I'm glad you said that. Mona Lisa that's does kind of look like a guy. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, they well, I mean, it's okay to criticize it's okay to criticize, but you're you're literally trying to get in and change the story, the game. It's like it's just it's like you said, it's really disrespectful and um, it's it just it, it's just entroaching and something where people just need to take a step back and just enjoy their video games, you know. Stop hey, demanding, stop hey, demanding were, this from video games. It's it's stupid. You were gonna say something, Dave? I was just gonna say we might want to get out of here before it gets too political. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Dave's Dave's yeah. political uh, political meters. <laughs> we gotta go. Yeah, we gotta go. All right, next story. Uh, so, okay, so this one's actually really big. So let's go back to something serious here. This ties into a lot of what we talked about two weeks ago. So Metro Exodus, which the Metro franchise is great. Uh, like I, I, I love the franchise. I think it's awesome. Uh, so it's going to be releasing solely on Epic's new platform. It's not going to be on Steam. So um, this is that, like kind of what we talked about. Like, that's that's kind of like betrayal against Steam, huh? Well, so uh, they... a lot of the comments that I saw about this are people are really mad about it. And a lot of the comments that I'm seeing are like, uh, well, we're not going to buy the game. Like, sorry, I love Metro, but like we're done with this. We're only going to be on Steam. Uh, the reason that this is happening is because I guess people are really mad that the Epic platform does not have a game review system on the platform like Steam does, which people really like. Uh, the one thing that Epic did do was that they just recently matched Steam's uh, great refund policy like to the letter. Um, so same thing there, which I think people really like. But as far as the game review thing, like people are not leaving Steam. Like when games are going over, I'm seeing like everybody say that they just won't buy it instead of going over to Epic. So I, what are your guys' thoughts on that? It's pretty crazy. I didn't think there would be such an opposition. I like that a lot, actually. I, I really like the idea of Epic. I like that idea of competition that we hit on previously with Epic and going against Steam. But right. the review aspect, think about what reviews yep. you're seeing on Steam. It's oh, yeah, generally it's the average person that's writing yep. that review. This isn't like the, the watered-down... Uh, was it like GameSpot review or something like that? Yeah, like IGN, yeah. Yeah, IGN, where you're I, getting I, the review that's probably influenced by, um, you know, funding, that kind of thing. Yes. I, I really like Steam's reviews, and I think it's a huge, huge, huge fall letdown that Epic is not going to try and replicate that in some way. Well, uh, I, let's, like, let's be honest. Like, don't, don't you think if that's like the big turn off for people to switch to epic i would imagine that epic would yep. figure out pretty quickly that yep. they need to add this if that's if that's the only like feedback like, they're getting. or barrier that's way too easy of a thing to mm -hmm. implement and overcome if that's like really the biggest issue right i agree Hopefully. yeah and i i mean i wolf i i agree with you on that I, I there's been a lot of games where i've looked at the reviews and it's turned me away there's been games that you know have been like my friends are like oh you know I don't, I don't really like it but then i lead the read the reviews and i get something that's more personal to me that's why i play it you know um but i also have noticed with games and reviews from random ass people is sometimes <laughs> they fucking suck like <laughs> and they could be like yeah, five in disagree. a row i don't disagree with that yeah and that it's like they're just talking shit on the game because they don't like the genre or, you know, there was one thing and their their childish um, attention span had led them to freak out about it. And they uninstalled the game and left. Yeah, it right. It, it goes back to it being subjective. Like, yep. just because you like this game doesn't mean I'm going to like this game and vice mm -hmm. versa. Like, it just depends on the person. Like, everybody likes what they like. Yeah. And regardless of that, um, I still think it needs to be there, but that's just my little input on it where, yeah, I really like it. But at the same time, it's like, you gotta be, you gotta read a lot of these to get You're a good right. idea. Well, the, the discerning reader, the, the, the one that's going to go through and, you know, objectively pick out things that you know, good reviews, bad reviews that can kind of scan through that. The steam system is really going to benefit that person to, yep. to find the good games. Mm -hmm. Whereas 
epic, it almost seems like you're going to be relying on, you know, those first impressions from the paid game reviewers on should I buy this game or not. And I feel like that kind of protects the developer, right? Yeah, so I mean, a, that input, <clears throat> a, a lot of people, a lot of people are framing the debate now, and they are <clears throat> basically, you know, two sides. It's um, Steam as pro consumer and Epic as pro developer. Mm. Uh, and I think there's a little bit of truth to both of those, but I, I don't know that I don't, Steam is anti developer, and I don't know that Epic is anti consumer. Well, I, um, I, I think that I there know. are elements to, to both. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't really know that that's a really fair debate for either. Well, the only thing that matters here is the consumer. So, I mean, like this 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 oh, whole it, the, the, society the, and culture is like the, set the up like. Well, the developer matters, and this is what we talked about in the first week. That if the developer is getting more money, that we could see possibly better games and less microtransactions and stuff like that in the industry. Yeah, like, but it's really important. Who, who's, it, it is, is important. Now, I'm not, important. I, I think the yeah. consumer is more important. But I mean, just because Epic doesn't have game reviews inherently built in the system right now, it doesn't mean that they're anti-consumer. I guess yeah. that's my point. Yeah, yeah that, yes, that's what I'm trying to say. I think well. it's just it's like, like a little like, bit ridiculous to like. That's like that that's way. like a it's like a defaming of fucking yeah, uh, I mean, of I don't know of their shit of Epic's platform <laughs> there. I, I wouldn't. I, I would get rid of that. As like quickly you could, as you could possible. still. I mean, couldn't you just go to Metacritic and look at user scores on there? I mean, I think yeah. they should just implement the the review system into Epic, but like it's not like there's not other review sites that exist. Yeah. Is yeah. it already too late when you say something like that? this first impression kind of thing uh, is this going to turn people off to, to something that was already going to be hard for epic to do to yeah. kind of plant themselves into this uh this marketplace to grab consumers it, yeah. getting this kind of negative feedback so early yeah can they recover even if they add this now does it matter it, everyone's going to think uh, that who knows? I, th- one I think it's a, I think it's a good point. I think that this is going to be a longer, yep. drawn out thing than something yep. that's going to happen. Like I, that, I that's going right. to be decided right off the bat. But well, I think we'll see in time. Yeah. yeah. I think it's something that I'm definitely going to keep following. So and I think. Oh yeah, we got we got to keep keep touching you know, up on this because weekly, this is huge. Monthly. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, okay, the last last story of the day, uh, the best story. Uh, <sighs> that we, one that we hope to wait for. <laughs> Uh, so Farming Simulator, everybody's favorite game, is getting its own esports league with two hundred eighty thousand dollars in cash prizes. Oh, so mama. start start practicing. You want to talk about skill based? Uh, <laughs> mostly, uh, mostly agricultural related events, uh, but there's also going to be things like uh, who can who can stack. Uh, is there any RNG in this? Eight bales the fastest, and stuff like that. So uh, I think the let skill everybody is- know. The skills will shine in farming simulator. That is for well, sure. I mean, is there like is there like droughts that take place? Is there like, <laughs> is there like a pestilence <laughs> that comes through and destroys the? We gotta add some RNG into this. I gotta be thinking you about this, man. Genetic yeah, you get like resistant crops. So. Yeah, I- insects are coming through. Yeah, like terrorizing your farm. Oh no. Yeah, yeah hey, market it, market on your calendars. It's never too late to just go back and be a farmer, man. Never too late. Can you can you also determine the gender of your farmer? Or, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, been sitting, he's been boiling <laughs> on this ever <laughs> since we were up there. <laughs> what about like animals? Like, do you have to have like a, like, a heterosexual yeah. animal yeah. relationship? I, I stick, and I have I just sexually strictly, promiscuous animals. Well, I want strictly women uh, cows. I'm gonna just yeah. Hmm. Yeah, like can yeah. I have a male pig that only <laughs> likes other male pigs? <laughs> I had a chicken farm with just uh, roosters. No, a bunch of cocks, if you will. Yes. <laughs> you see what we're getting at here? It's oh, kind of important. Oh the whole uh, reproducing thing, people. Mm-hmm. Just remember that. All right. Two two video game releases. Resident Evil Two, the the remake, came out Isn't January twenty fifth, which I heard was fantastic. Good I up. heard good things. Yeah. I never like, played it. I didn't watch it. But me neither. A couple people franchise. that I know. Sang its praises very highly. I, I yep, I've heard the same thing. That's, that's a first. The Resident Steam Evil. reviews have been great. Mm. What about the Epic reviews? Uh, they've been, oh, they've been pretty good. Have they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Been more short, short form. Yeah. Short form. <laughs> Almost like non-existent. If you think Ouch. About it. Uh, Ouch. and then the the best game, Kingdom Hearts Three, comes out tomorrow, January 29th. I may buy a PS4 just to play it because it's like my favorite franchise of all time. Uh, but uh, I haven't really heard so much about it. It's so. going to come out for PC, probably. It looks amazing. I don't know. 
uh yeah I, i'm really i think like just from my childhood playing it I, I think i just owe it to myself to get it and beat it i think i have to i kind of want you to i kind of want you to do it because i i loved both uh one and two but i really forget them i i, I probably i was like 13 years old yeah i think you have about like eight other games to play too to really get the full experience i've only played one the, and yep, two. Exactly. i've only played the main two you need like to play the, all the final fantasies 2.8 yep assassin's creed odyssey dlc Mm, you do. Um, you go Total watch War. all the Disney movies. Total War, yeah. Yep. yep. Slight influence there. All, yeah, all the Final Fantasies. Final Fantasy XI to sell me, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to get on there. Just the music, the the feel but, uh, that you get. Yeah, uh, that was a great show. I had a lot of fun. Does anyone have, yeah. anybody else have anything they want to talk about uh, before we wrap? The I Toy Story I... part of Kingdom Hearts 3. You want to talk about the, Toy Story? gameplay demo of it. Uh-huh. Yes, fan. It looks like the movie, man. I it's I didn't the play the first two. I've, I've watched people play them a lot. Um, it, Are they adding like? Go, oh, they're like in sorry. his room, I think. Like, and they're like outside yeah, of the well, house and that's stuff. Cool. You know, you know they have a cool. Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm cool right? with, I'm good. with your favorite character of all time, Jack. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, See, when you start getting into the new age Disney stuff, like oh, Pirates that's is all a right. great he, franchise. Great the original, the original Pirates is a great movie. No, I like the original Disney's. They're gonna, they're gonna. If they put Frozen in it, I'm, I'm out. Frozen isn't it? It uh, isn't. Uh, it. Oh no, like I, I just don't, I don't like it. This <laughs> new, this new no, age Disney no. shit. Dude. This could make you a believer, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's gonna make me and. They probably like watered down all the Final Fantasy stuff, like let it go. <laughs> let it go. But no, and then accept all the politically correct Disney horseshit. Dave, you liked uh, Frozen a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> what what's it about? He's got a frozen uh, bedspread, I think, last time. What do you expect? <laughs> Olaf was your probably favorite. Probably birds one every right? night. From Frozen? Is he the uh... snowman? Right? <laughs> I think this conversation has generated to the point where we can no longer carry on. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's time to get off, too. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. That, that was great. Oh, yeah, uh, pleasure. Pleasure as always. I'll uh, talk to you next week. Take it easy, guys. See you then. Yep. Might never talk to you guys again. Really? Olaf. Uh, just Frozen. <laughs> See ya.